Uh, now joining us on the program right now, Rick Ector from Rick's Firearm Academy of Detroit. Rick, how you doing, sir? Man, I am great. I am truly glad to be in St. Louis, Missouri this weekend. It is great to see a bunch of friends I've made from previous visits to the convention. It's great to be here on this set, on this show, <laughs> live again. Like you've, even, I was you've, in even, you've even got fans here. I got fans here, man. I, you know, you do the social media thing, Facebook, Twitter. You know, YouTube, the blog that I have, and you meet people all over the country that are that are gun enthusiasts, gun rights activists, and they come to the convention and you meet up and you have fun and you talk guns and you talk about what we're going to do to protect our rights, man. And, and for me, it, it's like uh, recharging, you know, my batteries and giving me, you know, some more energy when I go back home and have to deal with, you know. Some people who don't feel as passionately about this whole right to keep and bear arms thing that we do. So Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Well, you know what? I mean, you know, we, when, when there are armed citizen stories in Detroit, we like to give you a call. Uh, and, and that's why we have you on on a fairly regular basis because, you know, there are armed citizen stories that are making headlines in Detroit on a fairly regular basis. Fairly regular basis. You know, true. which I think is interesting because, you know, look, Detroit's crime rate is bad. We, we know the that. worst. Uh, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, But what's different to me when you look at, like, Detroit versus Chicago versus Washington, D.C., I don't think it's the the gun laws or the lack thereof that are causing uh, the violent crime. Because, again, we see violent crime in D.C., we see violent crime in Chicago Mm -hmm. through the roof, we see violent crime in Detroit. What you see in Detroit is at least the law-abiding have an opportunity to defend themselves. And and that's why, no matter how bad the crime is, it, it... I would rather be in Detroit than to be in Chicago or to be in D.C. At least I can take on that role of protector of myself, my home, and my family. Yep. I can make the decision to protect myself. And in those other places, those other locales, other municipalities, they don't have that right. And, you know, you're just at the mercy of the bad guys and the predators that, that exist that, that prey upon those uh, vulnerable members of the community. So you know what you know things are, are not as you know great as they could be where you know from home, but Detroit. But uh, I'm glad that I have the opportunity to protect myself. I'm glad that I have the opportunity to work with other people and to empower them and give them the gift of personal protection and let them protect themselves. Yeah, yeah. I guess the last armed citizen story that I saw from the uh, Detroit area, the uh, 75 year old homeowner. Uh, right, we talked, up, yeah, yeah, we, we, talked we talked about, about that, that on uh, March 30th, and since then, there's been a few other stories that came out. I know, oh, really? Uh, the very next day or the day after that, there was this one, uh, lady who uh, was at home, and three gentlemen came into her home. And, I do remember that And story. apparently, they found uh, one handgun that was in her purse, but, you know, she's, she's, she's my kind of gal. She had the other gun <laughs> upstairs with her, so... She used it, and she protected herself, and uh, the other three guys didn't stick around to see. Was that the story where, uh, according to this woman, the uh, when she fired the shot, she heard the uh, uh, two of the other guys say, oh, hell no, and they took exactly. off? Exactly, exactly. You know, that's what I want a criminal in my house to say. You know, I, I, I've I don't want them to say hello. I want right. them to say, oh, hell no. And right. I want them to turn and go. Well, the whole, the whole impetus behind what I do, man, my whole motivation is to get so many people that are armed that we reach a tipping point where even the individuals who are seriously anti-gun and will never buy a gun, even mm. they would be protected for the simple fact that a bad guy or a predator, he's going to think very hard before he selects another victim because so many bad guys are being shot and in some cases killed. So maybe they'll think twice before they commit that next violent crime. You know, um, so I ask you this question every time we have you on. Uh, you know, do these stories lead to more phone calls for they you do. as a fire trainer? They do. And, they, and, they, and they, they, they give encouragement to a lot of people because a lot of people that, that, that I'm getting now are really first-time gun owners, first time ever seen a real gun before, never fired one before. And they're like, okay, People are doing it. Well, you know what? A 75-year-old man, you know, had never fired that rifle before. All of a sudden, he found the courage and the wherewithal and the knowledge to do it. Maybe I can do this. That's right. And then they they go to the range and they shoot and they say, well, I can do this. Why in the world did I put this off? And I say, oh, gee, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I'm glad you... uh, I'm glad that you were encouraged. I'm glad that you uh, empowered yourself. Yeah. 
Yeah. So how many NRA meetings is this for you, Rick? How many have you made? Actually, this is only my second uh, convention. Really? This is uh, my second convention and my third overall gun rights conference. There was a, wow. the other one, the GRPC I went to in 07. Yeah. But uh, after I went to the GRPC, I said, well, let me check out the NRA. And, you know, you know the, the thing about. So you were down in, in Charlotte. Right? I was in Charlotte in 2010. Okay. You know, the thing, you hear a lot of things and people say a lot of things, but I believe that you shouldn't make your mind up about anything until you go check it out. Right. And I said, hey, I'm going to go down, you know, I'm going to ride 12 hours because I don't want to do the TSA thing at the <laughs> airport. I'm going to come on down and, and, and see what's to see. And, man, I had a ball. Met a, a lot of people, met, made a lot of contacts. And uh, Are you telling me you made it from Detroit to Charlotte in 12 hours? I sure car? did. Sure did. Wow. And I made it I want to ride, with, I want to ride yeah. with you next time. <laughs> you know what? It, it, going through Ohio, both in, in, in 2010 and this year, uh, coming here, coming through Ohio is always tough. But once you make it out of Ohio, you're going to be okay. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm on you as my uh, co-pilot next time. Anytime. Anytime. How, how, sure. how quick do you think we can get from Washington, D.C. to Houston next year? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think we'll have to do the TSA thing and take our chances with the with the, with the, with the, with the fellas, the screeners. Oh, don't tell me that. Uh, so so, what, so what, what brought you back this year? I mean, what did you find in 2010 that made you say, okay, I want to I go again? Well, I mean, it's everything I saw in 2010 that, 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 that's here in 2012. I mean, now I have more friends across the country. And right. when I leave here, I'm going to have other friends that I'm going to make from this visit. And we're going to network and we're going to do the social media thing. We're going to share ideas. Uh, just from the last time I was here, I was part of the uh, Second Amendment blog bash. And this is when a bunch of other bloggers were coming. As you know, I'm a blogger. My blog, Legally Armed in Detroit. And we hung out, and we uh, we did some things, and we were social, and that, that that carried forward, you know, throughout those remaining two years, where we, you know, we we do joint things together. We may do some guest posts on on blogs, and mm -hmm. you can you can market other blogs, and you can say, hey, this is a blog where I know over here. Check this out by him, and you know, just when you network and you see what other people are doing, you can share that within your network. So I'm looking to do that, and I'm also looking to check out some new products, and I'm looking to. Uh, meet up with uh, the manufacturers that are that are having some things out here, and that double tap. I I like that little thing. Uh, what is that? A forty-five caliber, forty-five caliber, two round forty-five caliber handgun. It's a little lightweight pocket piece. Yeah. I mean, just some of the toys that are out here, you know, on the floor. I get excited. Like right now, the convention, you know, the exhibitor space isn't exactly open right now. Right. Right. Here, but right. I know. Man, I can't wait to get, get at it tomorrow. You get a little sneak peek. All right. So I got to ask you from a firearms trainer perspective here, the, the, the double tap. I, I would not. I love the idea, but never as like a primary. No, carry that gun wouldn't for be me. my primary piece. That'd be my that's, tertiary that's like your, piece. That's like your emergency my, backup my, piece, right? My backup to my backup <laughs> in my pocket. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I I don't know if you knew this, but I routinely carry two handguns. Yeah. A uh, primary and a backup. That would be my tertiary third place piece. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, but I I I I do love the concept of this that. You know, there are there are people out there who um, look. Not every gun owner is going to be a gunny. No, not every gun owner out there, sadly, is going to be an uh, you know an a, a, an activist gun owner. I, I I have more of a problem with gun owners not being activists than I do with gun owners not being gunnies. Well, you, you know, know, the thing is, what really, what do you really need to have to just be a safe? user of a handgun right you know you listen to some of these anti-gun people they think you need to be a 15-year veteran on a local <laughs> law enforcement agency to be able to protect That's your right. house or to you know prevent you yourself need to go to being, the range every day right. before noon right to requalify for your concealed right. carry license you need right. to learn how to do a stakeout you know or, or <laughs> maybe learn some martial arts moves it is really simple there's, there's some you do need to practice and, and go to the range regularly and you do need to know the fundamental safe gun handling rules you need to do the storage thing to make sure that we don't don't have any accidents in the home but it does it's not rocket science right right exactly it's not and, and so i love the fact that we you know there is a product out there for somebody who is not going to not necessarily into guns but still wants to be able to protect themselves you know exactly. you know i i think that we have i don't know rick are we in a golden age of guns right now you know, I've been seeing some interesting products. Have you seen that double stack, double barreled forty five uh, semi automatic handgun? 
It's uh, got two barrels, two stones. Oh, have you yes, seen? Yes, I have. I wouldn't carry it as a de- as a gun, <laughs> you know, as a defensive piece. Right. But man, would I have some great conversations with that thing at the range? Right, right. I mean, it's it's, it's a nice piece. I are like all it. of are all of those now sort of the offshoots of the uh, the Taurus Judge? Like, all right, let, let's see what we could do. Right, like, right. You know, let, mix and match. Let's right. mash let's it put up. a shotgun shell in there. <laughs> take a forty-five Colt. Yeah. What else can we do? Right. What hasn't been done before? You know, I, I'm loving it. I, I am too. I mean, this is this is innovation mm-hmm. and it's you know and frankly again it's the free market at work we were talking with mark keith uh, editor-in-chief of american rifleman to start the uh, program tonight and he said you know the, the the gun companies are actually starting to listen to what people want it, it's you know it's not the gun company saying all right well what if we chamber this in you know a 270 what if we you know go to a different color they're actually listening to the, the not only their customers but their own employees saying you know this would be cool why can't we do this all right well, let's try to do it let's you know do it and we'll, we'll evaluate it and we'll give you some feedback and uh, hopefully it'll pan out hopefully we'll have some hits out there so if you had all of the firearms manufacturers uh, lined up in front of you and they said rick what would you like to see sir that uh, you don't think is out there on the market right now what 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 advice oh. would you give them oh uh, what do you want uh, me, I'm satisfied. I'm not, you know. <laughs> I'm not I'm, picky. I'm not really particular as long as it fits my hand like a glove and and it and it works yeah. every time I pull the trigger. I am happy. Oh, and it has to it has to look nice. It has to it has look either nice. be st- uh, stainless steel or all black. You know, something something nice. Okay. You know, you know how we gun guys are, man. You you buy a gun, you got to show your friends, right? And they when they look at it, there's that certain you know. Approval, whether it's tacit or whether it's you know vocal, that yeah, that's a right. nice looking gun. Right, right. You know, there's that one gun out there, man. Ooh, what is it? The PX Storm? Is that? that? Yeah, yeah, man. Ooh, it's like the ooh the Aztec of guns. Man. <laughs> 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 the Aztec of guns. Right, that would the be team the, of Aztec. That would be the Pontiac well, well, Aztec. Well, 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 well in, in my opinion, that, that, in that, your Aztec, opinion. that, that Aztec the way, car is the were, ugliest car in the whole wide world. I was going to say, but you know what? There, there were people who bought it. And yeah, so, there were so, employees who so, got a discount. So the PX Storm owners out there, <laughs> please direct your vitriol <laughs> towards this man right here, Mr. Rick Ector. Hey, before we get into things, I remember yeah. back in uh, – 2010. There yeah. was this guy. He was a guest on your show. I don't know what y'all talked about, but he brought in some goat cheese as a gift to you. I, I remember that. And, yes. and I remember, I, I don't know exactly, I could see the excitement that someone thought enough of you to come to the show and to show his appreciation. So I want to show, I want to give my appreciation. Give you a t shirt from my, my blog's logo, Legally Armed oh, in Detroit.com. Nice. Laid. Nice. So this is what I want to present to you. Well, my Rick, gift to you. Thank you, man. This is so cool. I love this. Legally armed in Detroit, yes. and that again, that's the name of the blog, right? That's the that's the logo to my blog. The name of my blog. That is so cool. Thank you, man. I'm gonna wear this while I'm here <laughs> in St. Louis. And now I want to go to Detroit just so I can wear the T-shirt. Oh, speaking of which, man, it was a question from someone in Virginia. They say, well, how come we can't have a conference in Virginia? Well, I got a question for you. How come we can't have a conference in Detroit? <laughs> You know, I, I'm sure Detroit could use the uh, economic we could, incentive. We could use the. Uh, we could Do use you seventy thousand people. Is, is, is there a? Uh, well, there's, for, there's convention space and there's uh, hotels. Yeah, we can handle. It. Really? Yeah, let's bring it. Let's okay. bring it to Detroit. You know, I need to go to Detroit seriously because I mean, I I, I, I look at. Some of the stories in the mainstream media, and I look at, you know, it's become a very popular thing now for photographers to go to Detroit and, and photograph all of the abandoned buildings. Right, they're so-called uh, ruin porn. Right, 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 right. So I think it's very easy for people to get a warped perspective. Like, I'm not sure I have a real perspective on what Detroit is like because I'm getting these images that are filtered well, you know, yeah, through you're, certain you're, lenses. It, it, right, if you wanted to show the ruins of Detroit, you're going to see some ruins. If you want to see the best of what we have and then, Right, and then, 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 like, then, then, then I watch Eminem drive his Chrysler through right. the streets, and I'm like... But that looks like New Orleans. Oh, that's because it was New Orleans. But uh, right, I'm sure it's <laughs> right. You, you, like you said, you got a filtered view. Exactly. Right. So you know what? I, I, I don't know if the NRA will uh, make it to Detroit. I don't know. Uh, it's not uh, up to me. It's I know not it's up to not me. up to you, but uh, but Cam will make it to Detroit uh, at some for point. sure. And you know what? I met for the very first time today, Mr. Yeah. Wayne Lapierre, and I, I that that made my conference already before we really? even started. Sure did. Met him at the uh, banquet, the banquet and auction today. Nice. One of the uh, one of the nicest, most genuine guys. I think he's a very cool guy. Yeah, uh, glad I finally met him. That's very cool. Well, listen, Rick, I'm glad that you could come by tonight, man. And I uh, hope this is not the last time that I will see you. In oh, St. it Lewis. won't be. 
It All won't right. be. Won't be the last time you see me in St. Louis, and it won't be my last conference. Fantastic, Rick Ector, Rick's Firearm Academy in Detroit, and obviously legally, you know. Hang on, I'm sorry. Hey, legally armed. Legally in armed in Detroit. I was going to show the logo one yes, more time. Yes, let's my get friend. it one That's more time. That's all I was going to do. Here you go. Legallyarmedindetroit.com.